You're gonna try a little MacGyver on this. Hey! How about that? I've got a couple flat tube tires on pressure washers, but this process of fixing the flat will hold true for any tube tire that you have. I'll show you how to remove the wheel, disassemble the tire, patch the tube, reassemble the tire, and reinstall. Let's get started. This first wheel has an Allen screw with a ring holding the tire on. So all we need to do is take an Allen wrench, remove that little, or back off the little Allen screw, pull the ring off, and we can remove the tire. She is flat, won't hold any air. Let's take it over to the workbench, patch that tube if we can. Okay, with the tire removed, we need to split this rim. And you take these four nuts and bolts out, and we'll be able to pull this apart and get the tube out. And this would be very typical of rim on a lawnmower. Now you can see the stem comes through the rim, so you just want to remove that. We'll set that aside, and we can pull the tube out. To make it easier to remove the tube, you can purchase a valve stem remover, and it's just a slotted tool like that. This is another style that you can get, and there's the slotted stem remover there. And you just put this in, turn it counterclockwise, and pull the stem out. Now any air that's in the tube can be pushed out. And we can easily remove the tube from the tire. And there we are. Now I don't know why this tube went flat, but if you have a lawnmower, or something that you're driving or running, you want to be sure to check the inside of the tire. Feel around in there very carefully because if there's a nail or a stick of wood or whatever in here, you don't want to cut yourself. And this feels okay. This tube may be rotten because it's been sitting so long. I don't know. We'll put the valve stem back in, pump up the tube, and check for leaks. Oh, that's a healthy leak. Oh, there's our leak right there. And there's actually kind of a crease in the tire. I think for from sitting for 10 years flat, somehow it got cut there. We'll see if we can patch it. I'm going to pull the valve stem back out. And here's our area of problem. And actually there's a crack. It's not at this seam. There's a crack right here. I've got my tire patch kits here. And this rubber cement, after you use it, it always runs out. So I went ahead and bought a bottle of it which is a lot less expensive. I think this is about five bucks. And after I use it, I turn it upside down. It keeps air from getting in there and drying it out. So I think it keeps it fresh if you store it upside down like that. But we'll find a patch that is the right size for that there. Got our scuffing pad here, a metal one, and there's also sandpaper in here to scuff with. And then we got our patches here. And this one might do for this. So we'll scuff it up first. It just helps it to get the any oil or grease or anything on that's on there off. And this will help it to adhere better. Okay, our next step is to apply the rubber cement. And you want to get it anywhere that the patch is going to go. 
I let the glue get a little tacky, and while I'm doing that, you need to take the foil back off of the patch. There's a clear covering on there and a foil back, and the best way that I find to do that is just take a corner, bend it over, you can press hard, and then I roll it back, and that separates that clear from the foil backing. This is the hardest part of the job right here. There, it released. That's sticky, which is good. That's what we need our patch to be. Now I'll apply my patch. And I want to get it right in that crease there. And roll it over on there. Beautiful. Now when I worked in a gas station, we patched tires like this. Car tires, tubeless tires. And there was a tool that you can roll this out. This is uh, for putting screens back in, but it works just as well. So you start in the middle and just work your way out. Get any air bubbles out of there. And we're going to let this sit for at least a minute to dry. Now typically they recommend you pull this little plastic cover off but I'm just going to leave it because this is in a tricky spot and I don't want to hinder this patch at all. We can go ahead and put the valve stem back in. Put some air in the tire. And we'll go ahead and put it in the bucket of water. And no bubbles. Looking good. That was a tough spot. Also want to check the rim, just make sure there's no sharp edges. So put this side on first, because you can't move the valve stem. So you get that in, pulled through, that's seated nice, not binding anywhere. Then we'll flip it over. There's our two nubs. We want to line that up right there and there. Perfect. Now we can put our bolt through. There's one and a second one. Just holding these with my fingers on the back side. Washer and the nut. Throw the valve stem back in. I like to just go around and make sure it's sitting in there right. Just squeeze it, put just a little air in, squeeze it out so that the tube's sitting in there properly. Now if you need to replace the tire or the inner tube on the sidewall of the tire, it gives the dimensions of the tire. You just need that and uh, you can go into Northern Tool or Harbor Freight or whatever you got in your local area and get a new tire or get a new tube. All right, let's go install it. All right, we've got two good tires it's on this. And now I'll go ahead and patch the other one. Now this other wheel, pressure washer, another pressure washer cart, has like a press-on cap that holds the wheel on. And rarely can you get those off and reuse them. Typically you gotta pry them off and then go to the hardware, like Ace Hardware, and it's kind of like a hat, and get a new one. We'll see what we can do with this one. retaining clips on there. It's best to get a new one. I'll try to press this back on, hammer it back on, but I think you need to go to the hardware store and get a new one nine times out of ten.
Now we'll put the stem back in, fill it up with air, and see where our leak is. Just looking for bubbles. There's one at the valve stem. And if that's the case, <laughs> you want to check that before you take it off the rim. So they're coming from somewhere else. Oh boy, right at the base of the valve stem. It's leaking right around here. That's not good. Yep, there it is. Right there. Where the metal and rubber are connected. I'm going to try a little MacGyver on this. Mixed up some JB Weld. I'm going to try to glue where the metal meets the rubber on that valve stem and see if this will seal it up. That way I don't have to run to the store. If it doesn't work, that's okay. I'll get a tube. I let the air out. This is soft, so there's not no pressure on there. And I'm just going to put this around the stem where the stem meets the rubber. See if that'll seal that up. So I just wet my finger and kind of smooth that off. I'll let that dry overnight, see how it does. Okay, let the glue dry up overnight and see if that'll be at least a temporary fix. Put the valve stem back in and we'll check and see if that took care of the leak. Do our test. Hopefully no leak. Hey! How about that? I just straightened it out after I pulled it off, but I need to go get a new one, or get a couple new ones. But hopefully this will hold temporarily. They're just disposable, they're press-on, and you almost have to destroy them to get them off. So we'll just slide the wheel back on. Wouldn't hurt to put a little grease on there. There is some grease on there. Especially if it's on like a tractor or something. This turns so slow, don't need that grease or even probably a bearing. Slide that on. Put the cap on and we'll tap it on. Now you can see it split, and the other one busted off. But that'll hold temporarily until I get a new one and just pop it on like that. So we got our tire all repaired, and we're good to go. If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.